You know what? These two can't be brothers. But why? I mean, look at them. Like, they look a breed apart. Hello there. Today's lesson is on idioms and phrases from your syllabus. Do not underestimate idioms and phrases because from your idioms and phrases that you use while speaking, while giving a speech or while communicating, it shows the quality of the language you're using. Imagine someone saying to you, it's not his fault that you failed in life, you're barking up the wrong tree. And then you don't understand what barking up the wrong tree means. Now imagine the embarrassment if you did not know the meaning of barking up the wrong tree. You do not know how to reply back. You do not know how to argue back. Or you... It's just embarrassing in short. Looking in the wrong places. It is not his fault that you failed in your life. It is not his fault that you couldn't make it. So you have no reason to scold him. A brick short of a load. If my dad walks in and sees me talking to my phone like this, he'd probably think that I am a brick short of a load. That means I'm stupid. A curate's ad is a phrase long taken from an anecdote. A curate is someone who is an assistant to a bishop or a high priest. Story goes that once a bishop had a curate come to his home for breakfast. And when breakfast was served, the bishop saw that, that the egg in the curate's plate was spoiled. So he said to the curate, Oh, you have a bad egg on your plate. The curate, so desperate not to offend his superior, the bishop, simply said, Oh no, parts of it are really good. So a curate's egg started to mean something that is partly good and partly bad. Like for example, this boat is a curate's egg. That means this boat is partly good and partly bad. The new boss is young and energetic. He just might be the new broom. New broom, a new employee who is expected to bring far-reaching changes. My uncle is a man of his word. You can rely on him. That means you can trust him. No problem. He, he, if he said it, he will do it. A trustworthy person. A man of straw. A man of no substance. In short, a useless man. While a man of his word is a trustworthy man, a man of straw is a not so trustworthy man. So, if you were to make a sentence on a man of straw, you can say, you cannot expect him to help you. He is just a man of straw. A cut above, better than. By using idioms in his conversation, his speaking skill is a cut above the rest. Which means by using idioms and phrases, the quality of his English gets better. A dark horse. A competitor who is underestimated but ultimately wins. We were really hoping that Tanya would bring Laurel to the school, but Susie turned out to be a dark horse. We were not expecting Susie, but she did it. A dark horse in our school happens all the time. You could be a dark horse. You never know. A dime a dozen. If I showed these hair clips to some girls, you might just say, Oh, they're so cute. I wish I had them. The same clips if I showed it to some boys, they just might say, Yeah, that's good. Bazaar de bhi pai. For the boys, the hair clips cost a dime a dozen. That means it is too common. Look at the picture here. The man is about to take a shot in the dark. He wins, he survives, he loses, he dies. A thorn in the side. That means an embarrassment. I cannot bring my brother to the party. Besides, he's a thorn in the side. After a fashion. My phone is functioning after a fashion, but I'm okay with it. Friends, Romans, and countrymen, lend me your ears. 
the famous speech of Mark Antony at the funeral of Caesar. What does Mark Antony want to do with my ear that he wants to borrow it? Mark Antony simply means listen to me. Listen to me for a while, right? Lend me your ears. So when it comes to ears, we mean listening. So here, all ears means listen closely. Students in my class were all ears when I told them the story of Sunshine Suzanne by Deepak Kiran. As bright as a button, intelligent, alert, and lively, as bright as a button. It is a myth that one has to be as bright as button to be successful, as brown as a berry. Look at you, you've become as brown as a berry after working in the paddy field for so long. As good as gold, that means very good. Remember that naughty cousin of yours whose parents had to work, had to go out, so they had to come and stay with you, and you as the elder one, you'll have to take care. And then how they mess around the house, how they don't know how to keep quiet. And then you just can't wait when their parents will come back and take them away. And then finally, when they come back, they'll say, Oh, I hope he was not naughty. And you'll be like, Oh no, he has been extremely good. He has been as good as gold. Add daggers to be in a strange relationship. The two lovers of yesterday are at daggers today. That means the two people who loved each other so badly yesterday now hate each other. Sixes and sevens means to be in total disorder. With power failure, the whole town was in sixes and sevens. That means without electricity, the whole town was in chaotic condition. The mother was totally focused on the child that she would reach out at the drop of a hat. At the drop of a hat, at the slightest excuse. Be at the back and call of someone under someone's absolute control. This lady has many servants at her back and call. Be in high spirits. The children seem to be in high spirits today. Be in good books to find favor. The Eliza always finds herself in the good books of the teacher because she excels in almost every field. That means Eliza is one of the favorite students because she is good at everything. So that's all for today. Namaste, I guess. I mean, I'm still learning how to start and end videos, so give me some time. Okay, bye.